Today I'm excited because we're going to be making some drugs. Dimethyl fumarate or DMF is basically a methyl ester of fumaric acid. It's the preferred drug for the treatment of scoliosis and I have learned about this chemical during one of my daily Wikipedia surfing sessions. And to be honest, I've instantly fell in love with it. So, to start, I've measured out around 30 grams of 93% concentrated sulfuric acid solution, after which I've measured out around 493 ml of distilled water. Here I'm basically making a 0.1 molar sulfuric acid solution. Now that we've got the solution, let's prepare our reagents. First of all, I've added around 1.5 grams of sodium bromate into a jar. This is a wicker, and this one is actually cracked. I have no idea how this crack happened, but I'm going to use it because I'm a gangster. Solution like this. Yellow production. Now I've added around 22 grams of malic acid into a beaker. Very nice. Like this, Russian blue style. Also, malic acid isn't toxic, so it's kinda okay to play around with. Now that we've got both of the solutions, let's add it into a round bottom flask. So to complete the apparatus, I've added a shitty condenser on the top. Next, I've turned up the heat and I've waited until the water bath started boiling. The ideal temperature for this reaction is 95C and a boiling water bath does it just fine. Right guys, so for this we're going full Prussian blue mode. I've just read the paper again and it turns out that... Fuck. What is this? Is it a tapeworm or something? Or whatever. So it turns out that I actually have to add sodium bromide to it and I really don't want to repeat calculations, so I'm just gonna save it. I'm just gonna add it at random. Here we go. There's already some crystals. Can you see this? There's some crystals there. Holy crap. That's good. That's for Marie Cassin, boys. There is a faint look of bromine here. It doesn't smell yet, but it's going to. She's. I really hate this part, alright? What's happening here is the catalytic isomerization of malic acid to fumaric acid. But what even is an isomerization? And to learn that, we have to know what is an isomer. Well, it's basically two compounds which have the same formula, but have a different arrangement of atoms. Anyway, this is a proposed reaction mechanism from the original paper that I've used. So you know these people actually know what they're doing. First, a bunch of reactions happen, mainly the bromate ion reacting in the acidic environment to produce bromic acid. Since bromic acid isn't stable, it breaks down into a bromine radical and water. This bromine atom then attaches itself onto one of the carbons, breaking this double bond. Then, uh, I... bromine does this, whatever it is. It's organic chemistry, okay? And then it switches places with the hydrogen. Then the bromine leaves the compound. The double bond is now reformed and now the hydrogen and methyl group are suddenly on the other sides and the isomerization is completed. Now that we're all caught up, check out this goofy as bromine fumaric acid effect. I'm gonna call it the Prussian bromo kaczynski phenomena when I inevitably circle physics instead of chemistry on my PhD application. Fumaric acid solubility is really low. In fact, it's so low that it's actually given in one milligram per milliliter. And in contrast to the malic acid, which has a really high solubility in water, it's really easy to separate the two. So the solution was refluxed for around two hours. Now that we have the main reagent, let's go to making the sclerosis medication. Hey you, yeah you, Prussian Blue is coming to Discord. You, you should join my Discord server now. First, I've got some of the fumaric acid on a jar cup and started hitting it. After the fumaric acid dried out, I've tried to weigh out around 1.5 grams of it. Next, I've added around 2 mils of methanol total and some for washings. For the reaction to work well, we're gonna need a 3 to 1 molar ratio of the methanol and the fumaric acid. Next, I've added some sulfuric acid as a catalyst. We need the ratio to be around 3 to 1, as that's because the reaction we're going to be carrying out is quite water sensitive, since water can reverse the esterification reaction, and it's actually produced in the reaction itself. With that being said, I've added the whole thing to the flask. Anyway, the whole thing was finally added, and I put it into another water bath. But this time I'm going to be carefully monitoring the water bath's temperature so that it does not exceed 60C. This reaction should be carried out at around 55C, which I got from some random graph on the internet. Anyway, the water is going to hurt the reaction, but I truly think that we've made some DMF at the end. 
So as the temperature rose over around 55C, a reaction started happening. This reaction is called the Fischer esterification reaction and it's a really easy way of creating an ester of a carboxylic acid and an alcohol. I've already explained the reaction mechanism in this video where I've made banana soda and if you're interested in the mechanism, I invite you to check it out. Anyway, as the Fischer esterification goes on, a bunch of water is produced, which is uh, but whatever. At the moment I was getting really nervous because I thought the reaction didn't occur because of the water. It was the middle of the night and the lack of sleep was really biting me the ass at the time. Anyway, to the flask was added around 100 ml of distilled water, just to knock out some fumaric acid. Anyway, to say for sure, I started filtering the whole thing. Next I added it on a beaker, and party time. And suddenly a white precipitate started coming over. And I believe that it was the dimethyl fumarate. Now, I'm not really an organic chemist or anything, or neither do I aspire to be, but I do think I've made some dimethyl fumarate. So I guess here's our scoliosis mat, that's cool. Anyway, remember to subscribe.